right, so here we go. Today's day is the 13th, and we have a new rule today. It's called the chain rule. All right, so new rule. All right, so we have, just as a review, we have the power rule. Right? And so if I ask you to take the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, you write down what does the power rule tell me to do? Hopefully you said the power rule to say you bring the exponent down, then you take x to the n minus 1. All right, that's the power rule. The product rule is what we've just been going over. All right, so if I ask you to take the derivative with respect to x, and let's just go with f of x times g of x. What does the product rule say how to take the derivative? Can you guys remember? I'll give you a moment. Hopefully you say, well, you got to take f prime of x, multiply it to g of x, and then you add to it f of x times g prime of x. Right? And the last rule that we have right now is the quotient rule. Ugh. rule. And this is the derivative with respect to x. If you have two things being divided, f of x divided by g of x, go ahead and write down this rule. And it starts exactly like the product rule. So it's going to be f prime of x times g of x. But then you just change it to minus f of x times g prime of x. This whole thing is divided by the g of x term squared. Right? So those are our three. And we're going to add to it today our chain rule. So before I get to that, oh, i got to write one more thing. You need to memorize the trig functions, the trig, you know, trig derivatives. Make sure you get those memorized, all right? So those three rules, make a note, try to memorize those few trig functions before we add to our list. Okay, so here's the lesson for the day. Right, so let's look at this. This is f of x is equal to x squared, and g of x is equal to x plus 5, right? If I ask you to set up f of g of x, this is the algebra question. If I ask you to set that up, what would you write down next? Don't yell it out. You just write it down. So hopefully you say, well, this is the way I process this information. I write down the outside function. So f of g of x. The f of is x squared, and then it just says wherever the x is, you input the g of x into it. So I'm looking at f of g of x equals, instead of x, I write down the x plus 5 squared. Right. So all right. now this is another algebra question before I can get into the calculus question. My question is, what are uh, f and g if this is true. What if I tell you that h of x is equal to the square root of 3x plus 4? What are the two functions that make up this function, f and g? What are the two functions that make up h of x, the new function? Just like up here, I had two functions. I created a new function. right? So now I did it backwards. I'm asking you to go backwards. If this is the bottom line, what were the original two? Just look at it for a second, see if your brain will pull it out. <laughs> Great. 
Griffin, you have a guess? Um, uh, would that be uh, Jack Black? Very nice. So f of x is equal to the square root of x and Very nice, 3x plus 4. Well done. Very nice job. If you have f and g switched, that's fine too, right? But I just want you to identify the two functions. Let's do one more. Same question. What if I tell you h of x is equal to uh, the sine of x cubed? What are the two functions, f and g? Danielle, do you have a guess? Um, that's, that's the okay. Well done. Very nice job. So those are the two independent functions that we merge together to create f of x. So if you have f and g switch, that's fine, right? So here is the chain rule for the day. This is the whole lesson, all right? So the chain rule says this. Um, if you is differentiable then okay so here's the rule the derivative with respect to x of u to the n okay so now u is a differentiable term and you have u to the n if I ask you to take this derivative you bring the exponent down so it's n times and it's going to be u to the n minus 1 but then you have to add to it, not add, multiply to that the derivative, I'm going to write u prime. Okay. So if you compare this rule to the power rule, which is right here, all the way up at the top here, here's the power rule, the derivative of the power rule, compare it to this one down, oh, I can't get them both on there. Uh, there. So if you look at the power rule, the n comes down, and then it's uh, x to the n minus 1. Down here, the n comes down. It's n minus 1, just like the power rule. But then you just have to do one more step, is take the derivative of this u term. And I'll show you how this works. OK. All right, so let's look at this example. If I ask you to take the derivative with respect to x of 2x plus x to the third, all of this raised to the fourth power. Okay. You have to recognize, this is the, one of the hardest rules. You, if we have a function inside of another function, if we have an f and g situation, that's when you know you have to use the chain rule. So don't write this down. I mean, unless it makes you happier. Uh, if, you, if this would be the f, this is, oops, f of x equals 2x plus x to the third, and if g of x is equal to x to the fourth, if you can see this, that there are two functions, you have to use the chain rule, all right? So what we're going to do is call u the inside. So I'm going to say u equals 2x plus x to the third. Right? Now, the moment you have u, and this is true for the rest of the year. We'll use u the entire time. The moment you write down u equals, you have to write down u prime. It's just automatic. You don't even have to think about this step. So what is u prime? The derivative of u, you would write down. Okay. Hopefully you said this is 2 plus 3x squared. Now, once you have u and u prime, you just uh, follow this rule. So what we've done is we've replaced this thing with a u right here. So I'm going to write u to the fourth power. So once you have u raised to the n, right? Do you see how I let, I'm going to write let u equal this thing? Once you have the substitution of u to the n, u to the four in this example, then you can take the derivative. So go ahead and take the derivative of u. So you should get 4 times u to the third times u prime, right? Because it says here you bring the exponent down, 
then you write u to the n minus 1, then u prime, and then all you do is substitute the information back in from above, right? So you have 4 times, I'm going to put u as 2x plus x cubed raised to the third times u prime, and you got to be really good with your parentheses, 3x squared. And that's the answer. And then you stop. Oh, no. Sorry. Thank you. Do I need to do it again? So did you guys get u, 4u to the third times u prime? I just took the derivative, right? The 4 comes down, make it 3, and then you have to add the chain rule. And it's hard to do math on this thing. I can't go lower than here. We'll do a few more. So let's just try another one here. So let's, I'm asking you to take the derivative with respect to x of, uh, let's go with 6 minus x squared raised to the 7th power. So if you're not sure, recognize that you have one function inside of another function. Right? All that, all you're doing is saying, oh, that's chain rule. Just like if we had two variables being multiplied, you've got to be like, oh, that's product rule. Right? So that's, that's the part of this. You have to recognize what is presented. So we have the chain rule. So the first step is say, well, if I have the chain rule, I have to get a u. I have to make this show up. I have to make this situation appear. So I'm going to say, well, I'm going to let u equals 6 minus x squared. The moment you have u, it's just automatic. Don't even think about it. Just automatically write down u prime. In this case, the 6 goes away. I'm left with negative 2x. Okay. The derivative says, if you can get this to show up, which I'm going to let it show up right now. I have this. Uh, I've replaced this with u. So I have u to the seventh power. So if you have u to the seventh power, it says take the exponent down. So I'm going to write 7 times u to the 6, then times u prime. Right? I'm just following this rule. It says if you have this, then you just do this. Right? So then I just substitute this in. 7 times u, which is right here, 6 minus x squared raised to the 6th power, times u prime, which is right below a negative 2x. Yeah? Should we simplify out like the 6 minus x squared and the 6? What's the 6th Put that on you cannot because of this minus sign. If it was multiplied, you can, okay. but these problems, it won't. It just won't. So right. we'll do a few more, but does, does somebody have a question? The, this is probably the, the most irritating rule. It's hardest to see, but once you see it, like I said, you will see it. So just hang in there. So what is the derivative with respect to x of the square root of 5 minus 3x. I'll give you a moment. Well, you got an answer? Are you still are you still processing? So, do you recognize that there's a function inside of another function? Cool. All right. So, what is the u equal to then? Perfect. So, u equals five minus three x. What is u prime? The derivative of u. 
Very nice, negative 3. Perfect. So now I'm going to rewrite this as I'm asking you to take the derivative with respect to x of the square root of u. Right? I'm just putting this u back in. I can't do derivatives. AJ? Perfect. That's it. I, I, I can't do calculus with square root symbols. So if you hear AJ, I'm actually going to rewrite this as u to the 1 half power. So Cole, take the derivative now of u to the 1 half power. Perfect. And then you have to say times u prime. That is the new part. All right. And now you just substitute the u and the u prime back in. All right. So you're looking at 1 half of u, 5 minus 3x to the negative 1 half times u prime, which is negative 3. And that's it for now. Right. Most people would pull this multiply. Let's just not get it all confusing. You should, you know, like negative 3 halves. Right. Not a big deal. Right. But that's just if you check the answer in the back of the book. That's the kind of nonsense. But if you compare with your peers and you get that line, I'm good. Okay? All right. How about this one? Two more. This one and one more. What if I write 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2? Take the derivative of that. Now, you're going to have to do some algebra before you can set up the derivative. I'll help you in 20 seconds. Now, for the record, you could, no, don't do that. So I don't have any rules that have a derivative where the variable is on the bottom. We don't have any rules. So what I'm going to do is use algebra. I'm going to move this whole thing up, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 3x plus 2. This whole thing raised to the negative 1 power. Right? Now, hopefully you can see that there is a function inside of another function. So I can set up my u and give it a go. I hope you in like 45 seconds. So once you recognize you have a function inside of another function, you have to use u substitution. That's what this is going to be called, right? Well, it's, yeah, chain rule, but u equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. The moment you have a u, automatically figure out what u prime is. In this case, it's 2x plus 3. And now I'll rewrite the problem. So I'm looking at the derivative of, I replace this with the u to the negative 1. It says once you have u to an exponent, you can take the derivative. So it's negative 1 times u to the negative 2 times u prime. And now I just substitute this nonsense back in. So I have x squared plus 3x plus 2 to the negative 2 times u prime, which is 2x plus Three. Make sure you're really good with parentheses work, right? If you don't put that quantity, it'll look like you're just multiplying by 2x and then you're adding 3. All right, last one and I'm done. Last one. So I have 4x cubed plus 5x raised to the 8th power over x to the 6th power. Now before you race off, think about the game plan. Uh, in your head, get a game plan, and then I'll tell you what you should do in 30 seconds. Anybody want to just take a stab up? Does it, on this front, do we have to do this? You're like a little incredulous. 
Anybody? Go ahead, AJ. Okay, so yes, and then what rule are you going to use? Very good. So now listen, he's 100% correct. But it's better if it's a division problem just to use the quotient rule. Okay, so if you say to yourself, oh, I'm going to bring this up and use product, leave it as a division, use quotient rule. So the governing rule for this problem is the quotient rule. So ask yourself, how do you take the derivative of the quotient rule? So that's a differentiable term on top being divided by a differentiable term on the bottom. Right? So go ahead and try to set that up. what do you see about the top? What rule then? We have to do the quotient rule to take this derivative, but to take the derivative of the top, what rule do we have to use? The chain rule. Very good. So you see like these rules start getting merged together, right? But the overall principle of the problem has to be quotient rule, but if you heard Kerr, you have to use the chain rule here. So use what you know about taking the derivative of a function inside of another function, the chain rule. Set that up and then set up your G, and then use the quotient to guide this problem. All right, so I'm going to say the f of x is the top. That's this quantity, 4x to the third plus 5x raised to the eighth. So this is my own problem. To take this derivative, I have to use u substitution or, or the chain rule. Uh, so u equals 4x cubed plus 5x. u prime equals 12x squared plus 5. So now I'm looking at u to the eighth power. So to take the derivative of u to the 8, it's 8u to the 7 times u prime. And I substitute all this in for f prime of x. The derivative of this term is 8 times 4x cubed plus 5x raised to the 7th times u prime, which is 12x squared plus 5. So that's f prime. Now my g of x is the bottom term. And then g prime is equal to... 6x to the 5. Any issues with that? Do you want me to repeat something? Because you were thinking, where did I get this? Now, to take the derivative of this term, you have to use the quotient rule. So it's the derivative of f, which is right here, f prime. So this number. Times g of x, which is x to the 6, minus the f of x function, which is the top function, times g prime of x, which is 6x to the 5. This whole thing is divided by the g of x term squared. And that, that's it. Don't do anything else. All right. So, uh, let me stop talking. Page 136. Let's give these an honest go. Work hard. Help each other. Come see me. Listen, nobody at home is going to help you the way your peers and me can help you. Okay? So, 7 and 27 odd, and then those three are the additional problems. 65, 73, and 91. Sucks to have COVID right now. AJ, do you know the name of the smartest dinosaur? Smartest dinosaur? Yeah. I do not. Yeah, the source. <laughs>